Praise and forever and ever. Amen. Awesome and unfailing protection. Do not spurn our supplications. Gracious and all praise to the Autokos. Uphold the Orthodox Commonwealth. Preserve those you have called to govern and grant them victory from on high. For you, the only blessed one, gave birth to God. Have mercy on us, O God, according to your great mercy. We pray to you, hear us, and have mercy. Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Again, let us pray for all devout and orthodox Christians. Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. Again, we pray for Archbishop Alexios and all our brotherhood in Christ. Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. For you are a merciful and and loving God, and to you we give glory, to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and forever, and to the ages of ages. Amen. In the name of the Lord, Father, bless. Glory to the holy and consubstantial and life-giving and undivided Trinity, always, now, and forever, and to the ages of ages. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, on earth peace, goodwill to men. Glory to God in the highest, on earth peace, goodwill to men. Glory to God in the highest, on earth peace, goodwill to men. O Lord, open my lips and my mouth shall show forth your praise. O Lord, open my lips and my mouth shall show forth your praise. O Lord, why do so many taunt me? Many of those who rise up against me. Many who say to me, there is no salvation for him and his God. But you, O Lord, are a shield around me, my glory, the one who lifts up my head. I cried out to the Lord in a loud voice, and from his holy mountain he heard me. As for me, I lay down and slept, then awoke, for the Lord will be my help. I'll not fear ten thousand people arrayed against me all around. Arise, O Lord, and save me, my God, for you have stricken all who hated me without cause. You have shattered the sinner's teeth. This deliverance is the Lord's upon your people be your blessing. As for me, I lay down and slept, then awoke, for the Lord will be my help. O Lord, in your anger rebuke me not, chastise me not in your wrath. Your arrows have bored into me, and your hand weighs heavily upon me. Because of your wrath, there is no soundness in my flesh. There is no peace in my bones because of my sins. For my iniquities have overwhelmed me. They weighed upon me like a heavy load. My sores have become stench and festering because of my folly. A stooping, exhausted wreck, I stumbled mourning all the day. My wounds were burning with fever, for my life is a total mockery. And there is no soundness in my flesh. I was crushed and deeply afflicted. I roared with a groaning in my heart. O Lord, all my longing is known to you, and my groaning is no secret to you. My heart races, and my strength has left me. Even the light of my eyes has failed me. My friends' companions approached and stood by, while my closest kinsmen kept their distance. And those who sought my life were egged on, while those who wished me ill spoke lies, upon deception all the day. But I remained as a deaf man and heard them not, as a dumb man and opened not my mouth, as a man who has not heard a thing, and thus has no retort upon his lips. In you, O Lord, I place my trust. You will give heed, O Lord, my God. I said, O oh, that my foes cease to goat over me, who bluster me mightily when my feet stumbled. As for me, I am ready to be scourged, and my pain is with me always. Indeed, I myself confess my guilt, and I live in anguish because of my sin. Those who are entering evil for good oppose me when I sought by justice. But my enemies survive and overpower me, and those who hate me without cause are multiplied. O oh, Lord God, forsake me not. Stay not afar from me. Hasten to help me, O Lord, my salvation. In you, O Lord, I place my trust. You will give heed, O Lord, my God. Hasten to help me, O Lord, my salvation. O God, my God, at dawn I rise early to you. My, my soul has thirsted for you, and oh, how my flesh has hungered for you. And like the desolate and trackless land that has no water, so did I come before you in your holy place to see the power and the glory that are yours. Since your love is better than life itself, my lips shall declare your praise. So shall I bless you as long as I live, and lift up my hands and call upon your name. My soul shall be filled as with choices fair, and joyful lips will praise your name. <clears throat> as I lay on my couch, I remembered you, I meditated on you throughout the early watches, that you became for me the helping one, that in the shelter of your wings I will find the light. My soul clings to you, and your right hand holds me up. But as for those who sought my life in vain, may they sink into the depths of the earth, and be given over to the sword, the prey of jackals they should be. The king shall, but the king shall rejoice in God, and all who swear by him shall glory, for the mouth of liars is stopped. I meditated on you throughout the early watches, that you became for me the helping one. Then in the shelter of your wings I will find the light. My soul clings to you, and your right hand holds me up. Glory to the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, now and always, and forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia, 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 glory to you, O God. Alleluia, 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 glory to you, O God. 
Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Glory to you, O God. Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. Glory to the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, now and always, and forever and ever. Amen. <clears throat> o Lord, God of my salvation, day and night I cried out before you. Let my prayer reach up to you. Lend your ear to my plea, O Lord. For my soul was filled with trouble, and my life came close to Hades. I was reckoned with those who go down to the pit. I was like a man beyond help, left for dead. Like the slain left to lie in the grave, those you remember no more. They are cut away from your hand. You have cast me down to the deepest abyss, into darkness and the shadow of death. Your anger was a burden upon me. You poured your billows over me. You took my friends away from me. You made me loathsome to them. I was clothed in and could not escape. My eyes grew dim with distress. I cried out to you, O Lord, all the day. I stretched out my hands to you. But will you work wonders for the dead, or can physicians raise them up to sing your praise? Does anyone sing your love in the grave, or your truthfulness in the midst of perdition? Are your marvels ever known in darkness, or your justice in the land of oblivion? And yet, O Lord, I cried out to you, and to you my prayer shall rise at dawn. <clears throat> Why, O Lord, do you reject my prayer? Why do you hide your face away from me? I am wretched and troubled since my youth. I was raised high and then humbled and distressed. Your plagues have swept over me, and your terrors have left me shaken. They surround me like waters all the day. They close in upon me from all sides. You have distanced from me, friend and neighbor, and my acquaintance is so wretched am I. O Lord, God of my salvation, day and night I cried out before you. Let my prayer reach up to you. Lend your ear to my request, O Lord. Bless the Lord, O my soul, may all that is in me bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all the gifts from him, who pardons all your sins and heals all your infirmities, who ransoms your life from corruption and crowns you with his love and mercies, who fills your longing with what is good and your youth is renewed like the eagles, the Lord performs deeds of kindness and vindication for all the oppressed. He has made known his ways to Moses and his will to Israel's children. The Lord is the one of compassion and mercy, long-suffering, and manifold love. His contention is not forever, nor will his anger always last. He has not dealt with us as our sins demand, nor does he repay our evil deeds. For as high as the heavens stand over the earth, so far has the Lord extended his love for those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our sins from us. As kind as a father is to his children, so is the Lord to those who fear him. For he himself knows well how we were formed, remembers we are only made of dust. A man his days resemble grass, as a flower of the field, so shall he bloom. But let a breeze pass over him, and he is gone, and never shall he know his place again. But the love of the Lord is from all eternity and to all eternity for those who fear him. And his justice is upon the children of children, of those who keep his covenant and remember his laws to obey them. The Lord has established his throne in heaven. Over all things, his kingship is supreme. Bless the Lord, all you his angels, you strong and mighty ones who obey his word on hearing the sound of his decree. Bless the Lord, all you his powers, his attendants who obey his will. Bless the Lord, all you his works in every place of his dominion. Bless the Lord, O my soul. Bless the Lord, O my soul, in every place of his dominion. O Lord, hear my prayer. In your truthfulness, give heed to my plea, and in your righteousness, answer me. And enter not into judgment with your servant, since of all the living, none is just in your sight. The enemy has hunted me down. He has crushed my life into the ground. He has forced me to live in darkness like those long dead. My spirit faints with grief, and within me my heart is in despair. <clears throat> I recalled the days of old. I meditated on all your deeds. I pondered the works of your hands. I stretched out my hand to you like a parched land. My soul thirsts for you. Make haste to answer me, O Lord, my spirit has failed me. Turn not your face away from me, lest I be like those in the pit. Grant that I may hear your steadfast love at dawn, for I have placed my hope in you. O Lord, teach me the way I should go, for I have lifted up my soul to you. O Lord, deliver me from my enemies, it is to you that I have fled. Teach me to do your will, for you are my God. May your good spirit lead me on a straight path. For the sake of your name, O Lord, you will keep me alive. In your righteousness you will deliver me from affliction, and in your loving kindness you will destroy my enemies. And bring to naught all those who oppress me, for I am your servant. O Lord, hear my prayer in your truthfulness, give heed to my plea, and in your righteousness answer me. O Lord, hear my prayer in your truthfulness, give heed to my plea, and in your righteousness answer me. May your good spirit lead me on a straight path. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, <coughs> and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and to the ages of ages. Amen. Alleluia, 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 glory to you, O God. <coughs> alleluia, 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 glory to you, O God. Alleluia, 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 glory to you, O God, our hope, O Lord, glory to you. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, 
have mercy. For the peace from above and for the salvation of our souls, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the stability of the holy churches of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house and for all who enter it, with faith, reverence, and the fear of God, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For our Archbishop Alexios, for the Honorable Presbyterate, for the diaconate in Christ, for all the clergy and the people, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For our country, the president, and for all in public service, let us pray to the Lord. Mercy. For the holy and great Church of Christ, for this holy metropolis, this parish and city, for every city and country, and for the faithful who live in them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For favorable weather, for an abundance of the fruits of the earth, and for peaceful times, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For those who travel by land, sea, and air, for the sick, the suffering, the captives, and for their salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. That we may be spared all affliction, wrath, danger, and necessity, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help us, save us, have mercy on us, and protect us, O God, by your grace. Lord, have mercy. Commemorating our most holy, pure, blessed, and glorious Lady, the Theotokos and ever Virgin Mary, with all the saints, let us commend ourselves and one another and our whole life to Christ our God. To you, o Lord. For to you belong all glory, honor, and worship, to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and forever, and to the ages of ages. Amen. God is the Lord, and he revealed himself to us. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Give thanks to the Lord and call upon his holy name. God is the Lord, and he revealed himself to us. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. All the nations surrounded me, but in the name of the Lord I defended myself against them. God is the Lord, and he revealed himself to us. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Para Kyrie wegen to afti kesti thamasti na thomisi mon Zeus Kyrios ke epefaneni min evlogi menos o ergomenos en onomati Kyrio. When you descended unto death, O Lord, you who are immortal life, <coughs> put deities to death by the lightning of your divinity. And when you raise the dead from the netherworld, all the hosts of heaven sang aloud to you. O Christ, God, giver of life, glory to you. Glory to the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Beacon of orthodox belief, the strong support of the church and her teacher, inspired by God. You are the ornament of monks, the unassailable champion of theologians. O Gregory, the wonder worker and the boast of Thessalonica, 
the messenger of grace forever earnestly entreat for the salvation of our souls Both now and ever into the ages of ages, amen. You were born of a virgin, and you endured crucifixion for us, O good Lord. By your death you divested death of spoils, and you displayed resurrection as God. Please do not despise us, the work of your hands. Demonstrate your loving kindness, O merciful Master. Defer to your mother the Theotokos when she intercedes on our behalf. And save us, your people, in despair, O Savior. Lord, have mercy. Antilabus, O son of Aeson, que dia filax on imas, on theostis, y cariti. Lord, have mercy. Is Panaya Sacrandui Pervoi, many sent dogs to the Spinisi Monte, a toku, Kiai, Cotena Marias, at the Pandom Tamayum, the Mavs and Des, Eatus, Kiai Lulus, Capas and Tinzuinimon, Christoto Teo Pratomata, Otison to Kratos, Kesostini, Vasadia, K. Dinimis, K. Doxa, to Patros, Ketuiu, Ketuayu, Nematos, Ninkei, K. Susionas, Doneono. Amen. When he took down your immaculate body from the cross, the honorable Joseph wrapped it in a clean linen shroud with spices and laid it for burial in a new tomb. But on the third day you rose, O Lord, and granted to the world the great mercy. Glory to the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The angel who had come to the sepulchre said to the murmuring women, Ointments are appropriate for mortal men. But Christ indeed has indeed a stranger to decay. Now go proclaim that the Lord is risen and granted to the world the great mercy. Both now and ever into the ages of ages, amen. All surpassing every thought, all surpassing glorious. O Theodokos are your mysteries. With your chastity sealed and your virginity preserved, still you are a mother in truth, for to the true God you gave birth. We pray you fervently and treat him to save our soul. Not preventing the sealing of the stone of the tomb, with your rising you gave to all the rock of the faith, Glory to you, O Lord. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, the choir of your disciples, and the murmuring women are greatly rejoicing together with us. For we are celebrating one and the same feast, which glorifies and honors your resurrection. By their intercessions, O benevolent Lord, grant to us, your people, the great mercy. Both now and ever into the ages of ages, amen. You are supremely blessed, O Virgin Theotokos. For through him who from you became incarnate, Hades has been captured and Adam has been called back. The curse has been killed and Eve has been freed. Death has been put to death and we have been brought back to life. 
Therefore we extol him and cry out, O Christ our God, you are blessed, for so was your good pleasure. Glory <coughs> to you. Blessed are you, O Lord, teach me your statutes. When the host of the angels saw how you were accounted among the dead, they all marveled. You, O Savior, are the one who destroyed the might of death. And when you arose, you raised Adam with yourself, and from Hades liberated everyone. Blessed are you, O Lord, teach me your statutes. Why do you mingle the ointments with your tears full of pity? O women disciples, thus the angel who was shining in the tomb Cry to the myrrh-bearing women, see for yourselves the empty tomb and understand that the Savior has risen from the sepulchre. Blessed are you, O Lord, teach me your statutes. Very early in the morning the myrrh-bearing women were hastening to your tomb lamenting. But the angel appeared to them and uttered, The time for lamentation has ended, weep no more. Go announce the resurrection to the apostles. Blessed are you, O Lord, teach me your statutes. When the myrrh-bearing women had come with their spices to your sepulcher, O Savior, they heard the voice of an angel clearly speaking to them. Why do you account among the dead the one who lives? For as God, he has risen from the sepulchre. Glory to the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. We bow down in worship to the Father and his Son and the Holy Spirit. The Holy Trinity, one in essence, and we cry aloud with the seraphim, Holy, holy, holy are you, O Lord. Both now and ever, and to the ages of ages, amen. Giving birth to the giver of life, O Virgin, you delivered Adam from sin. And to Eve you have rendered joy in place of sorrow. He who from you became incarnate God and man has directed to life him who fell from it. Alleluia, 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 glory to you, O God. Alleluia, 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 glory to you, O God. Hallelujah, 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 glory to you, O God. Again and again in peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. Help us, save us, have mercy on us, and protect us, O God, by your grace. Lord have mercy. Commemorating our most holy, pure, blessed, and glorious Lady, that they at Holcos and ever Virgin Mary with all the saints, let us commend ourselves and one another and our whole life to Christ our God. To you, o Lord. For blessed is your name and glorified is your kingdom of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, now and forever and to the ages of ages. Amen. After your passion, O Christ God, the women went to the tomb to anoint your body. They saw angels in the sepulcher, and they were amazed. For they heard them saying to you, The Lord had risen, granting to the world the great mercy. No, no. I direct the eyes of my heart to you in heaven, O Savior. Save me, I pray, shining on me your resplendent. Have 
mercy on us who hourly offend you in many things, O my Christ. And before the end, give us ways to return to you in repentance. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, both now and ever, and to the ages of ages. Amen. To the Holy Spirit, it is proper to rule, to sanctify, and to move all creation. For he is God, one in essence, with the Father and the Lord. Lord. If the Lord had not been with us, who would be sufficient to preserve himself uninjured from the enemy and murderer of mankind? Do not deliver me to the teeth of my enemies, O Savior. For in the manner of the of a lion they move against me, your servant. Glory to the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, both now and ever, and to the ages of ages. Amen. In the Holy Spirit is the principle of life. And to him belongs the honor, he is God. And in the Father, through the Son, he strengthens and sustains every creature. Those who trust in the Lord are like the holy mountain. They are in no way shaken by the devil's assault. Those who live for God never stretch out their hands in lawlessness. For Christ will not permit the rod of to be upon his inheritance. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, both now and ever, and to the ages of ages. Amen. From the Holy Spirit, all wisdom gushes forth, as does grace to apostles. By him martyrs are hoarded, for their contests and prophets have visions. Awaken, O Lord my God, in the ordinance you commanded. So the congregation of the people shall surround you. Exegersit the Kyrie o Theos mu en prostagmati o en etilo, ke sinago hila on kiklosi mesel. O Lord my God, and you I hope, awaken, O Lord my God, in the ordinance you commanded. So the congregation of the people shall surround you. Again and again in peace, let us pray to the Lord. Help us, save us, have mercy on us, and protect us, O God, by your grace. Commemorating our most holy, pure, blessed, and glorious Lady, that they at all us and ever the Virgin Mary with all the saints, let us commend ourselves and one another and our whole life to Christ our God. For you are the King of peace and the Savior of our souls, and to you we offer up glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, now and forever and to the ages of ages. Amen. Omnipotent Lord, you rose from the sepulchre, and the netherworld saw the miracle and was stupefied, for the dead were also raised. But creation saw it and rejoiced with you. Adam also greatly rejoiced. O my Savior, the world forever sings your praise. O my Savior, the world forever sings your praise. You, O Word of God, are the light of those in darkness. You are the resurrection and the life of all humanity. When you destroyed the power of death and smashed the gates of Hades, you raised everyone with yourself. Mortals saw the miracle and marveled. All creation rejoices with you in your resurrection, O benevolent Lord. So we all now glorify and extol your condescension. O my Savior, and the world forever sings your praise. 
and the world forever sings your praise. With one accord, we sing your praises, Father Gregory, who speaks from God, sonorous trumpet of theology, and divine and sacred organ of holy wisdom. But as intellect that stands before the intellect, unto him direct our intellect, so unto you we may cry aloud, Rejoice, O herald of grace. Re rejoice, O herald of grace. As a herald of mysteries, you appeared on earth plainly, proclaiming things divine unto mortals. Endowed with a human mind and flesh, and yet speaking in the tongue of the bodiless, you amazed us and convinced us to cry out to you, O godly redder. Rejoice through whom the darkness was banished. Rejoice through whom the light did supplant it. Rejoice, uncreated divinity's messenger. Rejoice, the confuter of one created and nonsensical. Rejoice, you who called God's nature an inaccessible height. Rejoice, you who called his energy a depth difficult to sight. Rejoice, for you correctly have discoursed on God's glory. Rejoice, for you have spoken against the views of the wicked. Rejoice, O star that made the sun evident. Rejoice, the bowl imparting the sweet nectar. Rejoice, through whom the truth shines refulgent. Rejoice, through whom was falsehood extinguished. Rejoice, O herald of grace. Rejoice, O herald of grace. <clears throat> On March 31st was the contest of the Holy Higher Martyr Hypatios, Bishop of Ganra. On this day, we also commemorate our devout father, Akakios, the confessor, Bishop of Melitene. On this day, we also commemorate the holy martyrs who witnessed in Persia. Aldous the Bishop, Benjamin the Deacon, and nine other martyrs with them, and many other saints who were imprisoned and were eaten alive by mice and weasels enclosed with them. The holy martyr Menandros reposed after being dragged naked over stones. The holy 38 martyrs who were relatives died by the sword. Our devout father Blaise, who was born in Amorion, reposed in peace. Our devout father Stephen, the wonder worker, reposed in peace. On this day, the second Sunday of Lent, we observe the memory of our father among the saints, Gregory Palamas, Archbishop of Thessalonica. The mind truly great in the light's bright herald is led by a light source to radiance never setting. <coughs> by his intercessions, O God, have mercy on us and save us. Amen. I open my mouth and pray the Spirit fill it like David said to pour out a good word to the Queen and Mother of God. <coughs> I will celebrate her feast with joy and gladness and sing to her merrily lauding her miracles. Establish her servants who extol you, O Mother of God, for they have formed a spiritual choir for you, the living and abundant fount. And graciously in your divine glory, give glorious crowns to them. When the prophet Habakkuk heard the divine and incomprehensible counsel of your incarnation from the Virgin, O Most High, Considering, he cried aloud, Glory to your strength, O Lord my God. Amazed was the universe by your divine magnificence, who, you who were perpetually virgin, carried the heavenly God of all in your womb, and gave birth to the eternal Son, who will award salvation to all who sing hymns of praise to you. O oh, godly-minded believers, come and celebrate this sacred and venerable feast, and thus extol the Theotokos, and clap our hands, and glorify our God, who was truly born of her. Godly minded, three did not adore created things in the Creator's stead. Rather disdaining the thread of fire, they trampled it, and joyfully they sang, O supremely praised. 
and most exalted Lord and God of the fathers, you are blessed. We praise and we bless and we worship the Lord. Guiltless were those servants who in the furnace, the son of the Theotokos went and rescued them. He who was prefigured then, having been incarnate now, is gathering the whole wide world into his church to save. O oh, all your works of the Lord to all ages, sing praises to the Lord and exalt him beyond measure let us pray to the Lord Lord have mercy for you our God are holy and you rest among the holy ones and to you we offer up glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit now and forever into the ages of ages Amen Everything that breathe, praise the Lord. Os ab no ien es atoton kirio. Let everything that breathe, praise the Lord. Let us pray to the Lord our God that we may be made worthy to hear the Holy Gospel. Son kirio lei, son kirio lei, son. Wisdom, arise, let us hear the Holy Gospel. Peace be with all. The reading is from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. Let us be attentive. Glory to you, Lord. Glory to you. At that time, Jesus revealed himself again to the disciples by the Sea of Tiberias, and he revealed himself in this way. Simon Peter, Thomas called the twin Nathaniel of Cana in Galilee, the sons of Zebedee and two others of his disciples were together. Simon Peter said to them, I am going fishing. They said to him, we will go with you. They went out and got into the boat, but that night they caught nothing. Just as day was breaking, Jesus stood on the beach, yet the disciples did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to them, Children, have you any fish? They answered him, No. He said to them, Cast the net on the right side of the boat, and you will find some. So they cast it, and now they were not able to hold it in for the quantity of fish. That disciple whom Jesus loved said to Peter, It is the Lord. When Simon Peter heard that it was the Lord, he put off his clothes for he was stripped for work, put on his clothes for he was stripped for work, and sprang into the sea. But the other disciples came in the boat, dragging the net full of fish, for they were not far from the land, about a hundred yards off. When they got out on land they saw a charcoal fire, there with fish lying on it, and bread. Jesus said to them, Bring some of the fish that you have just caught. So Simon Peter went aboard and called the net ashore, full of large fish, a hundred and fifty-three of them. And although there were so many, the net was not torn. Jesus said to them, Come and have breakfast. Now none of the disciples dared to ask him, Who are you? They knew that it was the Lord. Jesus came and took the bread and gave it to them, and so with the fish. Now this was the third time that Jesus revealed, was revealed to his disciples after he was raised from the dead. Glory to you, O Lord. Glory to you. Having beheld the resurrection of Christ, let us worship the Holy Lord Jesus, the only sinless one. Your cross, O Christ, we venerate, and your holy resurrection we praise and glorify. For you are our God, apart from you we know no other. We call upon your name. Come all faithful, let us venerate the holy resurrection of Christ. For behold, through the cross, joy has come to the whole world. 
Ever blessing the Lord, let us praise his resurrection. For having endured the cross for us, he destroyed death by death. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your great mercy, and according to the abundance of your compassion, blot out my transgressions. Wash me thoroughly from my lawlessness, and cleanse me from my sin. For I know my lawlessness and my sin is always before me. Against you only have I sinned and done evil in your sight, that you may be justified in your words and overcome when you are judged. For behold, I was conceived in transgressions and in sins my mother bore me. Behold, you love truth. You showed me the unknown and secret things of your wisdom. You shall sprinkle me with his up and I will be cleansed. You shall wash me, and I will be made whiter than snow. You shall make me hear joy and gladness. My bones that were humbled shall greatly rejoice. Turn your face from my sins and blot out all my transgressions. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Do not cast me away from your presence, and do not take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation, and uphold me with your guiding spirit. I will teach transgressors your ways, and the ungodly shall turn back to you. Deliver me from the guiltiness, O God, the God of my salvation, and my tongue shall greatly rejoice in your righteousness. O Lord, you shall open my lips, and my mouth will declare your praise. For if you desired sacrifice, I would give it. You will not be pleased with whole burnt offerings. Sacrifice to God is a broken spirit, a broken and humbled heart God will not despise. To go to Lord in your good pleasure unto Zion and let the walls of Jerusalem be built. Then you will be pleased with the sacrifice of righteousness, with offerings and whole burnt offerings. Then shall they young bulls on your altar and have mercy on me O God glory to the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit open to me the gates of Repentance, O giver of life, for early in the morning my spirit hastens to your holy temple.
Guide me in the path of salvation. According to the magnitude of your compassion, blood on my transgression. When I ponder in my wretchedness on the many terrible things that Save your people and bless your inheritance. Look upon your world with mercy and compassion. Raise the Orthodox Christians in glory and send down upon us your rich mercies. Through the intercessions of our most pure lady, the Theotokos Endeavor Virgin Mary, the power of the precious and life-giving cross, the protection of the honorable bodiless powers of heaven, the supplications of the honorable glorious prophet and forerunner John the Baptist, the holy glorious and praise of the apostles, our fathers among the saints, the great hierarchs and ecumenical teachers, Basil the Great Gregory, the theologian and John Chrysostom, Athanasius Cyril and John the Merciful Patriarchs of Alexandria, Nicholas Bishop of Mira, Spiridon Bishop of Trumethus, Nectarius of Pentapolis, the wonder workers, the holy glorious great martyrs, George the Victorious, Demetrius the Mirabritis, Theodore the Terran, and Theodore the General, Minas the wonder worker, the higher martyrs, Horalimbos and the left Thaddeus, the holy glorious victorious martyrs, the glorious great martyr and all laudable Ephemia, the holy and glorious martyrs, Thecla, Barbara, Anastasia, Catherine, Kiria, Ki, Futini, Marina, Padaskivi, and Irini, of our venerable and God-bearing fathers, the holy and righteous ancestors of God, Joachim and Anna, of our fathers among the saints, Gregory Palamas, Archbishop of Thessaloniki, whose memory we celebrate, and of all your saints, we beseech you, O merciful Lord, hear us sinners who praise you, and have mercy on us. Oh. 
through the mercy, compassion, and love of mankind, of your only begotten Son, with whom you are blessed, together with your all holy, good, and life creating spirit, now and forever, and to the ages of ages. Let us honor and magnify in song Theotokos and Mother of the Light. My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit has rejoiced in God my Savior. Greater in honor than the cherubim, and in glory greater beyond compare than the seraphim. You without corruption gave birth to God the Word, and are truly Theodotos, you do we magnify. He is regarded the lowly state of his maid servant. For behold, henceforth all generations will call me blessed. Greater in honor than the cherubim, and in glory greater beyond compare than the seraphim. You without corruption gave birth to God the Word, and are truly failed to cause you to be magnified. You. He who is mighty has done great things to me, and holy is his name. And his mercy is on those who fear him from generation to generation. Greater in honor than the cherubim, and in glory greater beyond compare than the seraphim. You without corruption give birth to God the word. And our truly Theotokos, you do we magnify. He has shown strength with his arm, he has scattered the proud in the imagination of their hearts. Greater in honor than the cherubim, and in glory greater beyond compare than the seraphim. You without corruption give birth to God the word. And are truly Theodotos, you do we magnify. He took down the mighty from their thrones and exalted the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things, and the rich he sent away empty. Greater in honor than the cherubim, and in glory greater beyond compare than the seraphim. You without corruption gave birth to God the Word, and are truly Theotokos, you do we magnify. He has helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy, as he spoke to our fathers and to Abraham his seed forever. Greater in honor than the cherubim, and in glory greater beyond compare than the seraphim. You without corruption give birth to God the Word, and are truly Theotokos, you do we magnify. All you born on earth with festival lamps in hand in spirit leap for joy, and all you the heavenly angelic orders join in and celebrate. And honor in the sacred wonders of the Mother of God. Sing the joyful salutation, O oh rejoice. Theodotos, O oh blessed ever virgin pure. Oh. Again and again in peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help us, save us, have mercy on us, and protect us, O God, by your grace. Lord, have mercy. Commemorating our most holy, pure, blessed, and glorious Lady, the Theotokos and ever Virgin, we all the saints. save us. Let us commend ourselves and one another and our whole life to Christ our God. For you, O Lord. For all the powers of heaven praise you, and to you they offer up glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit now and forever and to the ages of ages. Amen. Holy is the Lord our God. Aegeos Kyrios O Theosimon. Exalt the Lord our God and worship at the festival of His feet. For He is holy. Mm -hmm. One 
holds the sea of Tiberias, and Simon Peter, Thomas, Nathaniel, the sons of Zebedee, and two other disciples, in a boat together fishing, at Christ command they let down the net on the right side, and they caught so many fish when Peter heard it was the Lord. He jumped and ran to him. This was the third time. He showed himself to them here with bread and a fish on charcoal. Rejoice the Holy Father's boast, now the theologians. Rejoice a wisdom's dwelling place, tabernacle of stillness. Rejoice, O greatest of teachers, rejoice, O sea of discords, instrument of the active life, summit of contemplation, and one who heals, illnesses and passions besetting mankind. Rejoice, the Holy Spirit shrine, dead and alive, O Father. O Holy Lady, Queen of all, come to our aid in dangers. Anticipate adversities, be with us in our hour of need indeed at, at the last day. Let not Satan or Hades, nor yet perdition capture us, but through your intercession enable all to appear not guilty before the fearful judgment seat of your Son and God. O Lady Theotokos. Let Explain it, 
How did the soldiers lose the king whom they were guarding? Why couldn't the stone secure the rock of life? Either produce him who was buried, or else worship him as risen from the dead. Then join us and say, Glory to the abundance of your tender mercies, our Savior. Glory to you. Praise him for his mighty acts. Praise him according to the abundance of his greatness. Rejoice and be glad, all people. An angel sat on the stone of the tomb, and he announced to us the good news and said, Christ has risen from the dead as a savior of the world, and he has filled the universe with fragrance. Rejoice and be glad, all people. Praise him with the sound of trumpet. Praise him with the harp and lyre. Before your conception, an angel brought the salutation, rejoice, to the maiden full of grace. Again at your resurrection, an angel rolled away the stone from your glorious tomb, O Lord. The one brought a promise of joy, replacing the pain and sorrow. The other declared that the Master gives life, reversing the threat of death. Therefore we sing to you, Lord, benefactor of all, glory to you. Praise Him with timbrel and dance, praise Him with strings and flutes. Let everything that breathes praise the Lord. While in the world you attain to a life of blessedness, and now you are exalting with the ranks of the blessed, and dwell, O Bishop Gregory, in the land of the meek, being meek yourself. And you are rich in God's miracles, working grace, which you grant to those who honor you. Praise Him with resounding symbols. Praise Him with triumphant symbols. Let everything that breathe praise the Lord. While in the world you attain to a life of blessedness. And now you are exalting with the ranks of the blessed. And well, O Bishop Gregory, in the land of the meek, being meek yourself. And you are rich in God's miracle, working grace, which you grant to those who honor you. The mouth of a righteous man distills wisdom, the lips of righteous men distill grace. O blessed Father, you cut down the thorns of heresy, and in their place you planted sacred orthodox dogmas, and with your words you watered the seed of the faith, thus increasing it splendidly. And as a practical farmer you brought to God, Years of wheat increased a hundredfold. Your priests shall clothe themselves in righteousness, your saints shall greatly rejoice. The ranks of angels and mankind marveled, O blessed one, at the illustrious glory of your life which was blameless. For as a steadfast athlete by your resolve, you distinguish yourself indeed. As an ascetic and hierarch and of God, a worthy minister and genuine friend.
And Adam has been called back The curse has been killed And Eve has been freed Death has been put to death And we have been brought back to life Therefore we extol him and cry out O Christ our God you are blessed For so was your good pleasure Glory to you His good pleasure in mankind. We praise you, we bless you, we worship you, we glorify you. We give thanks to you for your great glory. Lord, King, Heavenly God, Father, Ruler over all, Lord, only begotten Son, Jesus Christ and you, O Holy Spirit, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, who take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us, you who take away the sins of the world. Accept our supplication, you who sit at the right hand of the Father, and have mercy on us. For you alone are holy, you alone are Lord Jesus Christ, to the glory of God the Father. And your name will I praise to eternity and to the ages of ages. Vouchsafe, O Lord, this day that we be kept without sin. Blessed are you, O Lord, the God of our fathers. And praised and glorified is your name to the ages of heaven. Let your mercy be upon us, O Lord, as we have set our hope on you. Blessed are you, O Lord, teach me your statutes. 
διδαξόν με τα δικαιώματά σου. Αμήν, Σοφία, βοήσουν τα σπίτια. Lord, you have been a refuge from generations to generations. I said, Lord, have mercy on me. Hear my soul, for I have sinned again. Lord, I have been a refuge from salvation of our souls, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the stability of the holy churches of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house and for those who enter it, with faith, reverence, and the fear of God, let us pray to the Lord. For pious and orthodox Christians, let us pray to the Lord. For our Archbishop Alexios, for the Honorable Presbyterate, for the Diaconate in Christ, for all the clergy and the people, let us pray to the Lord. For 
for our country, the president, and for all in public service, let us pray to the Lord. For the holy and great Church of Christ, for this holy metropolis, this parish and city, for every city and country, and for the faithful who live in them, let us pray to the Lord. For favorable weather, for an abundance of the fruits of the earth, and for peaceful times, let us pray to the Lord. For those who travel by land, sea, and air, for the sick, the suffering, the captives, and for their salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For our deliverance from all affliction, wrath, danger, and necessity, let us pray to the Lord. Help us, save us, have mercy on us, and protect us, O God, by your grace. Commemorating our most holy, pure, blessed, and glorious Lady, the Theotokos and ever Virgin Mary, with all the saints, let us commend ourselves and one another and our whole life to Christ our God. For to you belong all glory, honor, and worship to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, now and forever, and unto the ages of ages. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and everything within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his rewards. The Lord prepared his throne in heaven, and his kingdom rules over all. Glory to the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, both now and ever, and to the ages of ages. Amen. Again and again in peace, let us pray to the Lord. Help us, save us, have mercy on us, and protect us, O God, by your grace. Commemorating our most holy, pure, blessed, and glorious Lady, the Theotokos and ever Virgin Mary, with all the saints, let us commend ourselves and one another and our whole life to Christ our God. For yours is the dominion and yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, now and forever and to the ages of ages. Praise the Lord, O my soul, I shall praise the Lord while I live. I shall sing to my God as long as I exist. Blessed is he whose help is the God of Jacob, his hope is in the Lord his God.
Lord shall reign forever, you God of Zion to all generations. Protect us, O God, by your grace. After commemorating our most holy, pure, blessed, and glorious Lady, the Theodorus of ever Virgin Mary, with all the saints, let us commend ourselves and the world of the life to Christ our God. For you, O God, are good and love mankind, and to you we offer glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and forever, and to the ages of ages. To give you the authority, let's forgive those who have least done this, again, working dangerous against the Lord. Ότι πρέπει να πας από όλους τους νικηφούς και νύσεις στον Πατρίκη του Ιώ και το Γεωπνάβο του Νικέγγι της Ωνας των Αιώνων. Oh. 
Let us pray to the Lord. For you are God the Holy, and to you we offer our glory, to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and forever, and unto the ages of ages. strength of my song. He became my salvation. The Lord chastened and corrected me, but he did not give me off to death. Wisdom. The reading is from Paul's letter to the Hebrews. Let us be attentive. In the beginning, Lord, you founded the earth, and the heavens are the work of your hands. They will perish, but you remain. They will all wear out like clothing. Like a cloak you will roll them up, and like clothing they will be changed. But you are the same, and your ears will never end. But to what angel has he ever said, Sit at my right hand until I make your enemies a footstool for your feet? Are they not all ministering spirits sent forth to serve for the sake of those who are to obtain salvation? Therefore, we must pay closer attention to what we have heard, lest we drift away from it. For if the message declared by angels was valid, and every transgression or disobedience received a just retribution, how shall we escape if we neglect such a great salvation? It was declared at first by the Lord, and it was attested. To us by those who heard him. Peace be unto you, O friend. So 
Ορθία, ορθία, ακούσουμε του Αγίου Ευαγγελίου, wisdom, let us be attentive, let us hear the Holy Gospel, peace be with you all. The reading is from the Holy Gospel according to the Evangelist Mark. Let us be attentive. Glory to you. And when Jesus returned to Capernaum, after some days it was reported that he was at home. And many were gathered together, so that there was no longer room for them, not even about the door. And he was preaching the word to them. And they came, bringing to him a paralytic, carried by four men. And when they could not get near him because of the crowd, they removed the roof above him. And when they had made an opening, they let down the pallet, on which the paralytic lay. And when Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralytic, My son, your sins are forgiven. Now some of the scribes were sitting there questioning in their hearts, Why does this man speak thus? It is blasphemy. Who can forgive sins but God alone? And immediately Jesus, perceiving in his spirit that they thus questioned within themselves, said to them, Why do you question thus in your hearts? Which is easier to say to the paralytic, Your sins are forgiven, or to say, Rise, take up your pallet and walk. But that you may know that the Son of Man has authority on earth, to forgive sins, he said to the paralytic, I say to you, rise, take up your pallet, and go home. And he rose, and immediately took up the pallet, and went out before them all, so that they were all amazed, and glorified God, saying, We never saw. Anything like this. Again and again in peace, let us pray to the Lord. Help us, save us, have mercy on us, and protect us, O God, by your grace. Wisdom, and grant that always guarded by your power, who may give glory to you, to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and forever. And unto the ages of ages. Σίγουρα είναι εργόντα πάντα εν βάση τους Κύριε και υπέρ του μετέρμα και μάνα των λογημάτων δε τι είναι σύμφωνα και πρόσεκτο εν οποίον σου ότι πρέπει σε εμάς εδώ τους εθνικοί που τους κυρίζεις του Πατρή και το Υιό και το Υιό Πνεύμα την Ήμ και Ήμ και Ήμ στον αιώνα Αμήν Ο 
Θεός μας και τους άλλους. God, the one who visited our humble state in mercy and compassion, the one who placed us your humble sinful and unworthy service before your holy glory to minister to your holy altar of sacrifice. Strengthen us by the power of your Holy Spirit for this ministry and grant us reason when we open our mouths to invoke the grace of your Holy Spirit upon these gifts about to be set forth. That have regarded by your might we may ascribe glory to you to the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever, and to the ages of ages. Amen. Σου. 
And for those who enjoy it, the faith, reverence, and the fear of God, let us pray to the Lord. For our deliverance from all affliction, wrath, danger, and necessity, let us pray to the Lord. Help us, save us, have mercy on us. And protect us, O God, by your grace. That the whole day may be perfect, holy, peaceful, and sinless. Let us ask the Lord. For an angel of peace, a faithful guide, a guardian of our souls and bodies, let us ask the Lord. Lord. 
for pardon and remission of our sins and transgressions, let us ask the Lord. For that which is good and beneficial for our souls, and for peace for the world, let us ask the Lord. That we may complete the remaining time of our life in peace and repentance, let us ask the Lord. And let us ask for a Christian end to our life, peaceful without shame and suffering, and for a good defense before the awesome judgment seat of Christ. Commemorating our most holy, pure, blessed, and glorious Lady, the Theotokos, and ever Virgin Mary with all the saints, let us commend ourselves and one another in our whole life to Christ our God. Lord our God, the one who created us and brought us into this life, the one who showed us paths to salvation, the one who granted us the revelation of heavenly mysteries, you are the one who assigned to us your this mystery, ministry by the power of your Holy Spirit. Grant that we may be ministers of your new covenant, celebrants of your holy mysteries. Accept us who draw near to your holy altar of sacrifice according to the multitude of your mercy to become worthy to offer you this reasonable and bloodless sacrifice for our sins and the ignorance of the people. Having accepted this sacrifice at your holy altar and celestial and mystical altar as a fragrance, and may in return send down with the grace of your Holy Spirit. God, look upon us and at our worship and accept it as you accepted the gifts of Abel, the sacrifices of Noah, mm -hmm. the whole fruit, fruit, fruit offerings of Abraham, the priestly ministries of Moses and Aaron, the peace offerings of Samuel. Lord, as you accepted this true worship from your holy apostles, in your goodness accept also these gifts from us at the hands of us sinners, so that being deemed worthy to minister without blame at your holy altar of sacrifice, we may obtain the reward of the faithful and prudent servants on the awesome day of your just recompense. Through the mercies of your only begotten Son, with whom you are blessed, together with your all holy good and life creating spirit, now and forever into the ages of ages. be with you and with my spirit. Let us love one another that with one mind we may confess. Tastiras, Tastiras, and Sophia Boskoman. The door is the doors, and wisdom let us be attentive. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible. And in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of the Father before all ages, light of light, true God of true God, begotten, not created, of one essence of the Father, through whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary and became man. And he was crucified for us under Pontius Pilate and suffered and was buried, and he rose on the third day according to the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. His kingdom shall have no end. And in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the Creator of life, who proceeds from the Father, who together with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who is both through the prophets, 
In one holy Catholic, Catholic and apostolic, and apostolic church, I confess for my baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and look for the resurrection of the dead, and the life of the age to come. Amen. Let us stand well, let us stand with fear, let us attend, that we may offer the holy oblation in peace. the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God the Father and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us lift up our hearts. Let us give thanks unto the Lord. Master, the one who is, Lord God, worshipful, almighty Father, it is truly worthy, just, and befitting the majesty of your holiness to praise you, to him you, to bless you, to venerate you, to give thanks to you, to glorify you, the only one who is truly God, and to offer you this, our reasonable worship, with a contrite heart and a humble spirit. For you are the one who both who granted us the knowledge of your truth, who can speak of your mighty deeds, who can make all your praises heard or describe all of your wonders at all times. Master of all, Lord of heaven and earth and of all creation, seen and unseen, the one who sits on a throne of glory and looks upon the abyss without beginning, invisible, incomprehensible, beyond description, unchangeable, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the great God and Savior, who is our hope. He is the image of your goodness and identical seal who depicts in himself you, the Father, the living word, the true God, the wisdom before the ages, life, sanctification, power, the true light from whom the Holy Spirit was revealed, the spirit of truth, the gift of adoption, the pledge of future inheritance, the first fruits of eternal good things, the life-creating power, the font of sanctification from whom every creature, both rational and mystical, derives power to worship you and offer eternal glorification for all creation is subject to you. For angels, archangels, thrones, dominions, principalities, authorities, powers, and the many-eyed cherubim praise you, the seraphim, one with six wings and the other with six wings encircle you. With the two they cover their faces, with the two they cover their feet, and with the two they fly. They cry out to each other with voices that never cease and glorification that is never silent. Sing in the triumph of him, exclaiming, proclaiming, and saying, <laughs> One in the end, you did not turn away your creation from whom you had made, nor did you forget the works of your hands. But because of your tender compassion, you visited him in many ways. You sent forth prophets. You performed miracles through your saints who have pleased you in every generation. 
you spoke to us through the mouths of your servants, the prophets, declaring to us the salvation that is to come. You gave the law as an aid. You appointed angels as guardians. When the fullness of time came, you spoke to us through your Son himself, through whom you also made the ages. He is the splendor of your glory and the image of your hypostases, bearing everything by the word of his power. He did not regard it theft to be equal to you, the God and Fathers, but being God before the ages, he appeared on the earth, lived among people, and having taken flesh from a holy virgin, emptied himself, taking the form of a servant, the same form as our humble body, in order to make us in the same form as the image of his glory. For since sin came into the world through man, and death through sin, it pleased your only begotten Son, the one who is in the bosom of you, the God and Father, born of a woman, the holy Theotokos, and ever Virgin Mary, born under the law, to condemn sin in his flesh, so that those who die in Adam may be brought to life in him, your Christ. He became a citizen of this world. He gave commandments for salvation, turned us away from the illusion of idols, brought us to the knowledge of you, the true God and Father, he acquired us for himself as a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, cleansing us in water and sanctifying us by the Holy Spirit. He gave himself as a ransom for death in which we were held captive, having been sold under sin. He descended into Hades through the cross in order to fulfill everything with himself. He loosed the pangs of death and rising on the third day, he made the resurrection from the dead a path for all flesh inasmuch as it was not impossible for the author of life to be held by corruption, he became the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep, the firstborn from the dead, that he might be first in all things. And having ascended into the heavens, he sat on the right hand of your majesty on high. He will also come to render to each according to their deeds. He left us these gifts as memorials of his saving passion, which we have set forth before you according to his commandments. For when he was about to go forth to his voluntary, ever memorable and life-creating death, on the night in which he was surrendered himself for the life of the world, having taken bread in his holy and pure hands, and presenting it to you, God and Father, and giving thanks, blessing, and sanctifying, and breaking it. He gave it to his holy disciples and apostles, saying, Take it, this is my body, which is broken for you, for the remission of sins. Εδώ και της Αγίας αυτού μαθητές και αποστόλης υπόν, λάβετε φάγετε τούτο μου εστί το σώμα, το υπερημόν κλώμενον εις άφεσιν αμαρτιόν. Likewise, having taken the cup from the divine, mixing it, giving thanks, blessing, and sanctifying it, Εδώ και τη αγή αυτού μαθητέ και αποστολή υπόν, πιέτε εξ αυτού πάντα του το έστι το αίμα μου, το τη καινή διαθήκη, το υπερημόν και πολλών εκκοινόμενων. He gave it to his holy disciples and apostles, saying, Drink of this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the remission of sins. Do this in remembrance of me, for as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim my death and confess my resurrection. Therefore, Master, we also, remembering his saving passion and life-giving cross, the three-day entombment, the resurrection from the dead, the ascension into the heavens, the enthronement at the right hand of you, God and Father, and his glorious and awesome second coming. Your own of your own, we offer to you in all and for all. As I told songs, he brought to men, catapanda, kedia panda. Same numen, same logumen, same guys, to me, kid. Kedame thousand, the old Simon. Therefore, O Holy Master, we also, your sinful and unworthy servants, who have been made worthy to minister at your holy altar of sacrifice, not because of our own righteousness, for we have done nothing good on earth, but because of your mercy and compassion, which you so richly poured upon us, we dare to approach your holy altar of sacrifice, setting forth the antitypes of the holy body and blood of your Christ. We pray to you and beseech you, holy of holies, that by your favor of your goodness, 
your Holy Spirit come upon us and upon these gifts. Present us here and bless and sanctify them. Make him this and manifest these brothers, a precious body of our Lord God and Savior Jesus Christ. And that which is in this cup to become the precious blood of our Lord and God and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Praise you then by your Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 <clears throat> which will shed for the light of salvation of the world. And may you unite us all to one another and partake of the one bread and one cup in the communion of the one Holy Spirit. And may you grant that not one of us partake of the holy body and blood of your Christ to judgment or condemnation, but in order that we may find the grace with you of the saints who pleased you throughout the ages. Our fathers, fathers, patriarchs, prophets, apostles, preachers, evangelists, martyrs, confessors, teachers, and forever and your spirit made perfect in faith. Especially for most holy, your most blessed and glorious Lady, the third of Moses and ever Virgin Mary. Grant us the rest of the the land of your saints to keep squatting. Would you send the king to visit us where you can remember the world of the Catholic and Apostolic Church? From one end of the world to the other, we increase to her that is required by the precious blood of her Christ. Your holy gospel has to the end of the ages. Remember the words that she brought forth in this on behalf of the and through whom the intentions are further offered. Remember the word that she brought forth in good works in the holy churches and remember the poor. Reward them with the riches of the gifts granted in your heavenly instead of earthly, the fraternal instead of basic, the work that is the rich and the incorruptible instead of the incorruptible. Remember, Lord, those who deserts, mountains, caves, and recesses of the earth. Remember, Lord, those who work in chastity, piety, and satisfaction of the holy citizenship. Remember, Lord, every leader of authority who you be worthy to the real honor of the land and profound and adoring peace be good in the hearts of the holy church. And all your people, so it's in your tranquility. We may lead a sunny and quiet life from all reverence and dignity. Sustain those who are depressed in your house. Make the wicked good for your goodness. Remember, Lord, that the people here, here present, the people who are absent from this policy, have mercy on them and according to the multitude of your mercy. Fill their tre treasures with every good thing. Maintain their marriages, their kingdoms, and concord. Nurture the age of the infants. Teach the youth. Support the age. Comfort those who are weak and spirit. Bear the those together who will stay the leader of our passion has been misled. Join them together with your holy Catholic and Apostolic Church. Liberate those troubled by the Holy Spirit. Sail with those who sail. Travel with those who travel. Protect the widows, the friendly workers, deliver the captives, heal the sick. Remember where those who are in tribunals, mines, exile, bitter labor, those who are in every kind of affliction, necessity, or, or living in difficult circumstances. Call to remember all those who receive your great compassion, those who love us and those who hate us, those who ask us for more than pray for them. Lord our God, remember also the other people and pour out the rich mercy of all. Granting to all requests for, self, for salvation of God. Remember those who are not ignorant, ignorant, forgetfulness, ignorant, the multitude of the help of the hope of the of the the hardware of the the physician for the all things to all people. So you know each person is Among the first and ever, Lord, our Archbishop of Exodus, granting to your holy churches in peace, safety, honor, and health at the length of days, right in teaching the word of your truth. And remember those each one of us is in mind, and all the people. Remember, Lord, all Orthodox bishops, rightly teaching the word of your truth. Remember, Lord, also my unworthiness according to the multitude of your compassion. 
and forgive my every transgression, both voluntary and involuntary. Do not impede the grace of your Holy Spirit from the gifts set forth because of my sins. Remember, Lord, the presbyterate, the diaconate in Christ, and every priestly order. Do not put to shame any of us who surround your holy altar of sacrifice. Lord, watch over us in your goodness. Manifest yourself to us in your rich compassion. Grant to us a temperate and beneficial climate. Grant gentle showers to the earth for the bearing of fruit. Bless the crown of the year of your goodness. Bring to an end the schisms of the churches. Extinguish the insolence of the nations. Speedily put down the uprisings of heresies. By the power of your Holy Spirit, receive all of us into your kingdom, proclaiming us to be sons and daughters of light and sons and daughters of the day. Lord our God, grant to us your peace and your love, for you provided all things to us. And grant that with one voice and one heart, we may glorify and praise your most honorable majestic name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, now and forever into the ages of ages. Amen. And may the mercies of our great God and Savior Jesus Christ be with you all. Having commemorated all the saints again and again in peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the precious gifts you presented and consecrated, let us pray to the Lord. That our God, who loves mankind, having accepted them at his holy and celestial and mystical altar, as an offering of spiritual fragrance, may in return send down upon us the divine grace and the gift of the Holy Spirit. Let us pray. <laughs> Having asked for the unity of the faith and for the communion of the Holy Spirit, let us commend ourselves and one another in our whole life to Christ our God. Our God, the God who saves, you teach us to worthily thank you for the good works that you have done and done then do for us. You, our God, the one who accepted these gifts, cleanse us from every defilement of flesh and spirit. Teach us how in aught of you to perform acts of holiness, so that with the witness of our conscience, being pure and receiving the portion of your sanctification, we may be united to the holy body and blood of your Christ, having received them worthily, we may have Christ dwelling in our hearts and become the temple of your Holy Spirit. Yes, O our God, do not find any of us guilty before you these your whole awesome and heavenly mysteries, nor sick in spirit or body by partaking of them unworthily, but grant that until our final breath we may worthily receive a portion of your holy gifts as a means of eternal life, as a good defense before the awesome judgment seat of your Christ, so that also we, gathered together with all the saints, have pleased you throughout the ages, may become partakers of your eternal good things which you have prepared for those who love you, Lord. Mm -hmm. And grant us, Master, that with boldness and without condemnation to dare to call you the heavenly God, Father, and to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Pat de Ramon, who in these journeys, I get a seed of the Masu, and of that of us, yes, yet a seed of the very Masu, or Surano gave me his keys, to mark the Ramon, the Musion, those who speak singer, Gav, a speak of Philima de Mon, or Stemis of the Eminence of that as this morning. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, now and forever, into the ages of ages. Amen. Peace be with all. Let us bow our heads to the Lord.
Lord, Master, the Father of mercies and God of all consolation, bless, sanctify, protect, fortify, and strengthen those who have bowed their heads to you. Keep them from every evil act, engage them in every good work, and make them worthy to partake without condemnation of your pure and life-giving, creating mysteries for the remission of sins, for the communion in the Holy Spirit. Through the grace, compassion, and love for mankind of your only begotten Son, with whom you are blessed, together with your all-holy, good, and life-creating Spirit, now and forever into the ages of ages. Hearken, O Lord Jesus Christ, our God, from your holy dwelling place, and from the glorious throne of your kingdom, and come to sanctify us. You were enthroned with the Father on high, and are present among us invisibly here, and with your mighty hand grant communion of your most pure body and precious blood to us and through us to all the people. Let us be attentive. The holy gifts unto the holy. I believe and I confess, O Lord, that you are the truly the Son of the living God who came into the world to save sinners, of whom I am the first. I also believe that this is truly your pure body and that this is truly your precious blood. Therefore, I pray to you, have mercy upon me and forgive my transgressions, voluntary and involuntary, in word and deed, known and unknown, and make me worthy without condemnation to partake of your pure mysteries for the forgiveness of sins and for life eternal. Amen. Behold, I approach for holy communion. O Creator, burn me not as I partake, for you are fire which burns the unworthy. Wherefore do you cleanse me from every stain? Tremble, O mortal, beholding the divine blood, for it is to the unworthy as a live coal. The body of God both deifies and nourishes me, deifies my soul, and wondrously nourishes my mind. How shall I, the unworthy, enter into the splendor of your saints? If I dare to enter into the bridal chamber, my clothing will accuse me, since it is not a wedding garment. And being bound up, I shall be cast out by the angels. In your love, O Lord, cleanse my soul and save me. Loving Master, Lord Jesus Christ, my God, let not these holy gifts be to my condemnation because of my unworthiness, but let them be for the cleansing and sanctification of my soul and body and for the pledge of the future life and kingdom. It is good for me to cling to God and to place in him the hope of my salvation. You have smitten me with yearning, O Christ, and with your divine love have you changed me, but do you burn away with spiritual fire my sins and make me worthy to be filled with the joy of you, that rejoicing in your goodness, I may magnify both your advents. Receive me today, O Son of God, as a partaker of your mystical supper. I will not reveal your mystery to your adversaries, nor will I give you a kiss as did Judas, but as the thief will I confess to you, Lord, remember me when you come into your kingdom. <laughs> Other figures of the other of my brothers is the Lord me a sinner. the Lord Jesus, the Lord Jesus, the Lord Jesus, the
Tu dai pessoa que não quer fazer isso mesmo. Se marcar para que eu farei. Eu vou já ver. Lord, I join here to my Lord, the King and God. Forgive me, Forgive me, my brothers and sisters. I feel lost in my work. There will be catechism this morning, so we ask that all of the teachers and students for catechism please come forward first for Holy Communion. 
Also, um, as you can see, we have the, uh, the scaffolding up and our iconography is underway. And so we thank you once again for uh, accommodating the, the tighter squeeze and for having the uh, ushers uh, bring you to your seats. Um, also, just because of the uh, different arrangements, we're going to be doing communion a little bit differently for the next few weeks. Uh, so please come to the, uh, follow the, the guidance of the, uh, the, the ushers and come directly to the middle aisle. We're going to be forming still three lines, but they're all going to be forming down the middle aisle. And um, Father Paniotis is going to be in the center, right at the solea, especially for those who aren't able to step up. But then Father John and I are going to be a little further back uh, for those who can come a little bit farther up to uh, receive Holy Communion um, on the wings as well. And then you'll go out the, to the left and the right uh, aisles uh, on your way back. And again, just follow all the guidance of the ushers. Thank you. Me da fuerza el viste que la vis procede de In the fear of God and with faith and love draw me Servant of God, your name? Servant of God, your name? Servant of God, your name? Servant of God, Servant of God, receives the Holy Body, Spread of the Savior Jesus Christ, Servant of God, Servant of God, of God, Servant of God, Servant of God, Receive me today, Son of God, as a partaker of your mystical supper. I will not reveal your mystery to your adversary. Nor will I give you a kiss as to Judas. As the thief will I confess to you. Lord, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Master, remember me when you come into your kingdom. O Holy One, remember me when you come into your kingdom. The servant of God, Natasha, receives the most precious body of the Lord God and Savior, Jesus Christ. So we we'll give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. For his mercy endureth forever, alleluia. O oh, give thanks unto the God of gods, for his mercy endureth forever, alleluia. O oh, give thanks unto the Lord of lords, for his mercy endureth forever, alleluia. To him who alone hath brought wonders, for his mercy endureth forever, alleluia. To him that made the heavens with understanding, for his mercy endureth forever, alleluia. To him that established the earth upon the waters, for his mercy endures forever, alleluia. To him who alone hath made great light, for his mercy endures forever, alleluia. The Son for dominion of the day, for his mercy endureth forever, alleluia. The moon and the stars for dominion of the night, for his mercy endureth forever, alleluia. Upon you, Lord, 
the servant of God, Demetrius. Servant of God. Servant of God. Servant of God. Christina receives the most precious body and blood of our Lord God, the Savior Jesus Christ. Unto the remission of sins and life of the last day. I will not reveal your mystery to your adversaries, nor will I give you the kisses to Judas. As the thief will I confess to you, Lord, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Master, remember me when you come into your kingdom. O Holy One, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Servant of God. Servant of God. Son of the Lord, the Lord who gave all his son, the Lord of me and so. Oh God, save your people and bless your
υψώθηκε μπρος ο Θεός και πάσει η δόκτρα σου. Υψώθηκε μπρος ο Θεός και πάσει η δόκτρα σου. Υψώθηκε μπρος ο Θεός και πάσει η δόκτρα σου. Ευλογητός ο Θεός ημών. Blessed is our God, now and always and unto the ages of ages. Having partaken of the divine, holy, pure, immortal, heavenly, life creating, and awesome mysteries of Christ, let us further give thanks to the Lord. Help us, save us, have mercy on us, and protect us, O God, by your grace. Having prayed for a perfect, holy, peaceful, and sinless day, let us commend ourselves and one another and our whole life to Christ our God. Read the prayer, then. Lord our God, we thank you for the partaking of your holy, pure, immortal, and heavenly mysteries, which you give us for the benefit, sanctification, and healing of our souls and bodies. Master of all, grant that the communion of the holy body and blood of your Christ will become for us faith unashamed, love unfeigned, abundant wisdom, healing of soul and body, protection from every opposing force, safe keeping of your commandments, and a good defense before the awesome judgment seat of your Christ. For your sanctification, and to your will, for our glory, to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and forever, and unto the ages of ages. Let us go forth in peace. Let us pray to the Lord. Christ our God, the one who accepts a sacrifice of praise and well-pleasing worship, this re reasonable and bloodless sacrifice from those who call upon you with your whole heart. You, the Lamb and Son of God, the one who takes away the sins of the world, the blameless calf, who does not accept the yoke of sin and who involuntarily sacrificed herself for us, the one apportioned and not divided, the one eaten and never consumed, but who sanctifies those who partake, the one who in remembrance of your, in your voluntary passion and life-creating third-day resurrection, proclaiming us partakers of your ineffable, heavenly, and awesome mysteries, your holy body and precious blood, watch over us, your servants, those who minister, our leaders, the armed forces, and all the people here present in your holiness. Grant us to contemplate your righteousness in every time and season, so that having been led to your will, having done the things pleasing to you, we may, may be king worthy. Also stand at your right hand when you come to judge the living and the dead. Deliver our brothers and sisters who are in captivity. Visit those who are in sickness. Guide those who are in dangerous seas. Give rest to the souls of those who have fallen asleep in the hope of eternal life but the light of your countenance keeps watch. Hear all those who ask you for your help because you are the giver of good things. And to you we offer our glory together with your Father who is without beginning and your all holy good and life creating spirit now and forever and to the ages of ages. Amen. Christ our God, inasmuch as we are able, the mystery of your economy has been accomplished and perfect. That perfected, we commemorate your, commemorated your death. We saw the type of your resurrection. We were filled with your everlasting life. We enjoyed your inexhaustible delight. Be well pleased so that we may also be worthy of it in the age to come by the grace of your Father who is without beginning and your all holy good and life creating spirit now and forever and to the ages of ages. Amen. Please be seated. Father Michael will deliver the message today. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. I thought that was one of my children, so I'm, I'm grateful to see that it's somebody else's. <laughs> Sorry to call you guys out. Uh, I, think I, enjoyed, but, uh, <laughs> it, 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 I really thought it sounded like Luke, but, uh, but it wasn't, though. That's okay. I love, I love hearing kids in church. Um, and in fact, that does relate a little bit to the sermon for, for today, um, because... Uh, we were having a leadership team meeting for our Goya, for our, our middle school and high school 
um, ministry this past week, and um, I shared a little brief word of encouragement, but then one of the Goya leaders um, also shared a little word of encouragement to their peers, and uh, this was uh, Carmela, she's not here so I can embarrass her. Um, she said, uh, she, she quoted uh, something about Lent that she found somewhere, I don't know the source of it, but I really liked it, and it basically said, in the silence of Lent, listen for his voice. In the silence of Lent, listen for his voice. And I think that struck me, particularly as we think, exactly, particularly as we think of uh, the Sunday of St. Gregory of Palamas today, um, because St. Gregory of Palamas characterizes and epitomizes, you could say, in the Orthodox tradition, the practice of inner silence or inner stillness or isihia or hezekia, the hezekastic practice, the Greek uh, for stillness or silence is isihia, and we'll say a little bit more about that in a moment, but we commemorate St. Gregory of Palamas every second Sunday of Great Lent, and for those of you who are not aware who this man is or was, he was born at the end of the 13th century, at the end of the 1200s. Uh, in, in modern-day uh, Turkey, in Asia Minor. Um, and his father was a senator in the courts of Constantinople. And um, they were Christian. Uh, the, the empire, the Eastern Roman Empire, was Christian at that time. And St. Gregory was given the best education you can imagine, the best secular education you, you can imagine. And he was a very bright young man. Uh, born of a very wealthy and, and, and prominent family. There's actually an interesting story about his father that's worth mentioning, which is that when uh, they were in court with the emperor and his father, who was a senator and kind of a, a, an advisor to the emperor, um, was present, the emperor asked him for his opinion, and he didn't respond. And so the emperor turns towards him to ask him again, but noticed that he was in deep prayer, saying the Jesus prayer in the middle of the courtroom. <laughs> and his father was a, a very faithful man and obviously, I think, you know, passed this down to his son. Uh, but it was a striking instance of uh, this emperor who was, at the, you know, the, the most powerful secular ruler uh, in, in, that, in that context, um, asking the advice of one of his uh, advisors, and the advisor was so um, caught up, you could say, in his relationship with, with Christ that he wasn't even concerned to answer the emperor. I think that's, there's something for us in that as well. I think that, um, you know, of course, we are, we are called to acknowledge and to uh, obey uh, the worldly rulers and authorities to the extent that we're able but we also always recognize that Christ is our supreme king and, and ruler and, and to be able to um, kind of have that as our priority. But anyway, St. Gregory, um, instead of following the kind of worldly path of, of political uh, career that his father had uh, embarked upon, he decided to, um, to follow his yearning for Christ um, into the monastic life. And so he left and he went to Mount Athos, which is a peninsula in Greece, in northern Greece, um, which is dedicated to a monastic prayer even to this day where there are thousands of monks who live there in these ancient monasteries praying to God. And so he went there to um, dedicate his life to prayer. He also uh, went to a place outside of Thessaloniki, in, in the, outside of the town of Veria, which is well known in, uh, in, in, in the New Testament, um, for being uh, the place where people knew the scripture when Paul came and preached there. Um, but there's, uh, there was a, a, a group of ascetics there that, that he, he, he joined, and he lived uh, an ascetic life there and on Mount Athos. I had the chance, if you ever have a chance, to go to Vedia to the monastery where he lived, I would highly recommend it. Um, it was an incredible experience, particularly because you get to see the cave in which he prayed for, for years on end. And the, the amazing thing about this cave is that uh, in order to get in, the caves, the door of the cave is about this, this high off the ground. So in order to get in, you literally have to get on your hands and feet and crawl through this tunnel into this 
cave room, and the, the room is, is not too large. It's probably five feet by five feet, and maybe, I don't know, four, four feet tall or so. Um, and it's incredibly quiet, incredibly quiet. And then you notice that there's actually a, a, another little entrance within that cave leading to an additional cave beyond that. And you have to crawl again, kind of scramble through this tunnel and you get into another cave where there's this beautiful illuminated candle with an icon. And if you thought that cave was quiet, this one is, there's something that's even quieter about that. This is like the, the inner chamber of silence um, that St. Gregory prayed within for so many years. But St. Gregory of Palamas, um, even though he practiced this hesychastic prayer, this prayer of inner stillness, primarily through the repetition of a prayer called the Jesus Prayer, which is Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy on me, the sinner, or there are shorter versions of it as well. Um, he was called off of the holy mountain, off of Mount Athos, uh, because there was a controversy brewing within the church regarding specifically the movement that he was a part of, the hesychastic movement, uh, because there were people who were accusing these hesychasts of not, of, of basically of being deluded and of not experiencing God's grace, but of kind of experiencing some form of, of delusion. And the people, um, one of whom the primary uh, person was named Barlam, the Calibrian, because he was from Calibria, or at least lived there for a certain time in Italy, um, claimed that we cannot know God's grace and God's presence directly. That, uh, that, we, that we are not able to have an immediate encounter with the grace of God, but that the, um, the grace of God in a certain sense is part of God's creation and is not part of God directly and immediately or is not uh, an expression of God directly or immediately. And so uh, he accused these hesychasts, these monks, uh, who were practicing the Jesus prayer and who were claiming to experience God's uncreated energies, God's immediate energies through, the, through, through many forms, but in particular through the form of what they called the uncreated light, where, where some of these very pious, very uh, devoted monastics would be praying the Jesus prayer or the Psalms or something like that. And all of a sudden, the whole room would be filled with this light and this presence and this sweetness that filled the room even physically where it looked like this blinding sunlight, but also within the context of their own hearts and soul. And so Barlam and others claimed that this was delusion, this was not true. And so because of this controversy, St. Gregory had to, had to come away from his outer stillness into the context of Thessaloniki, where he debated this and where there, were, there was kind of a great... Uh, he was even imprisoned uh, because of this and, uh, and, and a great controversy, which I won't get into now. Eventually, he actually became the Archbishop of Thessaloniki and um, a great patron of it. Um, his relics are, are actually, to this day, are kept in the metropolis, the Metropolitan Cathedral of Thessaloniki, which is uh, dedicated to him, St. Gregory Palamas um, Church. And you can go there and you can venerate, uh, to this day, the relics of St. Gregory of Palamas. But I, I want to pose the question, and I think it was actually perfect that we had some, some babies uh, chattering, because I want to pose the question of, of, of whether or not we believe, as Orthodox Christians living in the world, in suburban, you know, kind of outside of the perimeter of, of, of Atlanta, of the city of Atlanta in the 21st century, um, living as we do in this context, if we believe that hesychastic prayer, the, what would they call the prayer of the heart or noetic prayer, this inner stillness, um, this experience of the sweetness of God's grace in our life, whether we believe that this is possible for us here and now, or is this something that only could have happened to somebody in the 12th or 13th century, or somebody who lives on Mount Athos, or somebody who lives outside of the busyness of the world? I think it's an important question because I've, I've heard of a number of parents who are in church and who say, for example, I don't feel any peace <laughs> while I'm in church. I'm constantly running in and out of the church, tending to the, the needs of my children, 
Um, if anything, when I come to church, what I feel more than anything else is anger and frustration um, because, you know, my kids aren't acting the way that they should be acting and all I'm doing is, is you know, taking them out when they're screaming. So church for me is more about <laughs> anger and frustration than it is about hesychastic peace and silence. And what do you say to someone who experiences church like that? And may, perhaps it's not a parent, perhaps it's someone with, with chronic pain, or perhaps it's someone who's struggling um, with addiction, or who's struggling um, with any form of suffering or a cross that they've been given in life um, that doesn't allow them, at least on one level, to be able to focus, to be able to have this beautiful, peaceful, prayerful stillness and silence um, that we often think about when we think about coming to church. I wanted to share just a brief little story of something that happened in our times. Um, and I, while I didn't meet the actual villagers to whom this happened, I did meet the person who um, had direct contact with them, who served them as a priest, and who um, is a, also a theologian in Thessaloniki, a man by the name of Father Nicholas Ludovicos. Um, he's, a, he's a brilliant um, human being, just very, very bright and intellectually um, kind of, uh, uh, he has many, many degrees, um, and just, just, just one of those kind of genius characters who knows a lot about a lot. And um, I was going to be studying with him when I first went to Thessaloniki. Things didn't work out that way, but, uh, but I did have a chance to interact with him. And he tells a story about when he was first ordained as a priest in Thessaloniki. And this story relates, I think, to this question of whether we, as everyday normal human beings, can experience this kind of um, immediate encounter with the grace of God. So he was uh, serving these villages right after he got ordained. He was serving about 12 different villages outside of the city of Thessaloniki in northern Greece uh, because they didn't have a regular priest, so he would kind of go from one village to the next, serving them uh, the liturgy when he could. And um, he realized that as he was doing this, he started feeling very alone and very angry and frustrated with these supposedly simple and uneducated and oftentimes misguided villagers that he was serving. So one day, you know, in, in the isolation of his loneliness, because he had been working with some of the best Orthodox theologians of the 20th century, um, he was their teacher's assistants and doing all these wonderful things. Um, in his isolation and his loneliness, he was invited to go out to coffee with the parish council after church and with the retired priests of one particular parish outside of Thessaloniki. And so he kind of begrudgingly uh, agreed to go and uh, they were sitting around a table at a cafe just chatting and he was kind of lost in his own world of, uh, of intellectual daydreaming and um, at a certain point the uh, parish council member turns to him and says father can I tell you a story he says sure why not and he says uh, a number of years ago we realized that our parish had not been blessed by a bishop the, the word for that is it had not been consecrated by a bishop. It's almost like a, a baptism or a chrismation for an actual church building. And this church has been. I've seen beautiful pictures of it. Many of you have probably uh, witnessed it firsthand. So they said, this church has not, we realized this church wasn't consecrated, so we didn't know. Does the Holy Spirit still come down and change the bread and wine into the body and blood of Christ on Sundays? Or does this not happen? Father Nicholas kind of rolls his eyes and you know, in his mind, he's thinking, oh, these simple, uneducated villagers, don't they know that you don't have to have a consecrated church to do divine liturgy? You could do divine liturgy in the woods if you wanted, as long as you have certain items that the, the bishop gives you in order to do divine liturgy. But he, he, he just kind of listens. And he says, so we decided as an entire community that we were going to fast and pray for the next three weeks. Now, mind you, when we think about fasting, we think about it on the level of eating a vegetarian or a vegan diet. But the traditional approach to fasting, all the way from the time of Christ, was you don't eat anything, basically. So they, like, did not eat anything for three weeks, okay? This entire community. And he said, on the second Sunday, when the priest was serving the Divine Liturgy, we were all gathered in the church as a community, and all of a sudden, during the liturgy, 
This blinding light filled the entire church. And everyone experienced this. And he said, Father, it was, it was the kind of light where past, present, and future all come together in one moment. And he said, when we experienced that light, we felt that God answered our prayers, that the Holy Spirit does indeed come down for the liturgy, even in an unconsecrated church. Now, Father Nicholas's jaw, he has to pick his jaw up from off the floor, and he's thinking, oh my goodness, here I am judging these simple, uneducated villagers, and they're having experiences like that of St. Gregory of Palamas, whom I've been studying and reading about. And so his whole kind of world is shaken up by this, and he starts to go and visit them in their houses to start to try to understand who these people are and what would have made them be able to experience this incredible encounter with the uh, presence of God. And he went to one particular man's house who was a farmer, a simple farmer, and he asked him, he said, what do you do all day? How do you spend your day? He said, Father, what do you mean, what do I do all day? I do my work, you know, I, I come to church, and I try to be a little patient, a little patient with my, my neighbors, with my, my relatives. That's it. That's all I do. Father Nicholas is thinking about it, and he's thinking, hmm. So he starts to kind of chew over these words and, and sort of realizes and conveys this to the people that he's talking to, that maybe there is something to be said for just being a little patient, being a little patient. And I'm speaking again to, you know, the parents, uh, those of us who come to church feeling like there's nothing happening here, feeling like all we experience is the irritability and the frustration and the anxiety and the whatever of our everyday lives. And I think there is something to be said. This is perhaps the bridge between us as everyday 21st century um, Americans living in, you know, outside of uh, the city of Atlanta. This is the bridge between us and St. Gregory of Palamas. Just be a little patient. Uh, St. Ephraim of Katunakia, another modern saint and someone who lived on Mount Athos, said something striking and, and very similar. He said, if you are patient with yourself and you are patient with your neighbor, you will become a saint. If you are patient with yourself and you're patient with your neighbor, you will become a saint. Hesychastic prayer, inner stillness, it's very different perhaps from the sort of Zen, um, you know, closed eyes, not wanting to have any outer distractions, approach to spirituality that maybe we've come to feel is uh, the right way. Um, perhaps our spirituality, and, I, and, and, and don't get me wrong, I think it's extremely important to spend time in stillness and prayer. I think it's extremely important to try to unplug from our external distractions. I think it's important to try to do that on a daily basis for, it, for as much as we can do that. So let's just keep that as a kind of a foundational thing. But that is not, has, that's not isihia. That's not inner stillness that St. Gregory is talking about. Just being able to unplug from our outer circumstances is, is one um, factor that can contribute to us being prepared for inner stillness. But inner stillness is actually more about, I think, patience, humility, love, repentance, obedience, long-suffering, all of these qualities that we actually hear about in Scripture that till the hardness of our hearts. Gratitude. Gratitude is a big one. That till the hardness of our hearts and allow for our hearts to become soft and humble and not too inflated and kind of thinking too much about ourselves, but just to kind of do our little simple, humble tasks to the extent that we're able to, uh, to not worry too much if we can't get everything done, uh, to not have too lofty of expectations for ourselves or our others to, as one motivational speaker says, uh, contemporary motivational speaker who you'd never, never necessarily expect to say this, a guy named David Goggins, some people might be aware of who he is, uh, he says, we need to try to cap our success. 
cap our success. Don't try to be too successful. Because when you try to be too successful, you spread yourself thin. Okay? Limit your desire for success a little bit and focus more on your own personal improvement. And for us as Orthodox Christians, that is our connection with Christ, our humility, our obedience, our love. Let's not, try to, let's not be too fancy. Let's not be too um, snazzy, too, uh, you know, um, too put together, too put together. Just try to be normal human beings uh, who are striving to be humble, to be patient, to be loving, to do our little prayers. And who knows? We may not ever experience a blinding manifestation of the uncreated life as an entire community here at Holy Transfiguration Greek Orthodox Church in Marietta, Georgia. But let us not forget that the uncreated light manifests in many different ways. Not only through a seemingly visible manifestation, but it could also be through a burning of our heart, a warming of our heart, a sweetness and a fragrance, inner fragrance in our hearts and our souls, a softening of our hardness and our resentments and our unforgiveness towards one another. All of those aspects are aspects of the uncreated grace and energies of God. There are many ways of experiencing the uncreated energies of God in our everyday life. So let's not be too lofty in our mindset to think that we can't experience those things in simple, humble ways, but primarily whether we experience them or not, to be simple, humble, gentle people of God, uh, both to our own selves and to uh, those around us. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you. to the Lord. May the blessing of the Lord in his mercy come upon you through his divine grace and love now and always and to the ages of ages. Amen. Glory to you, Christ our God. Glory to you. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit now and ever and to the ages of ages. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Father, bless May Christ, the true God, who rose with death through the intercession of his pure holy mother by the power of the precious life giving cross <clears throat> through the intercessions of the honorable bodiless powers of heaven, the supplication of the honorable glorious prophet of our the Baptist, the holy glorious the cross with the apostles, the holy glorious triumph of martyrs of righteous and God bearing fathers who are father among the saints, base of the great Archer of Caesarea and Cappadocia. The heavenly revealer of his divine energy, we celebrate, we celebrate it of the call and righteous ancestor of God, Joey Kim and Adam, of the Holy Father among the saints, Gregory Palamas, Archbishop of the Saloniki, whose memory we celebrate today, and all the saints may have merits upon us and save us for his good and love to humankind. Through the prayers of our Holy Father, the Lord Jesus Christ, our God. Have mercy upon us and save us. Mm. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ with the intercessions of the Holy Theodogos and Gregory Palamas and all the saints be with you today and always to bless you and protect you. Please be seated. Let's pass the trace.
Yeah. Good morning. While the trays are being passed, just wanted to offer some brief announcements for you all this morning. First of all, our liturgical offerings for this week of continuing in the second week of Great Lent um, continue, or the third week, rather, rather uh, going into the third week of Great Lent, um, continue uh, in their robust form. We're going to be having um, uh, 6 p.m. Great Compline this Monday. Nothing on Tuesday. Wednesday, we have uh, Divine Liturgy of the Pre-Sanctified Gifts at, at 545, <clears throat> followed by a, a potluck and presentation. On Thursday, again, we have Great Compline at 6 p.m. Friday, the Salutation Service at 7 p.m. to the Theotokos, a beautiful service uh, in, in honor of the Theotokos. And then on Saturday, we'll have our normal 5 p.m. Great Vespers uh, for the Sunday of the Holy Cross, which is the midpoint of, of, great, of great Lent. Mm -hmm. Um, in addition to our services, uh, we have a number of other offerings that you can uh, take a look at in the bulletin, uh, other uh, activities and events. We did want to call uh, to your attention a few of those, or a couple of those. One is um, the Philoptopos is sponsoring the annual Parish Lenten Retreat. Um, and this year it's going to be, in, it's entitled Living Orthodoxy. Uh, the guest speaker is a well-known author and, and uh, professor and speaker uh, from the West Coast. Her name is Dr. Eve Tibbs, Dr. Eve Tibbs. Um, she has a number of books and podcasts and presentations out. You can check those out to kind of preview. Uh, but this will be on Saturday, April 13th um, from 8.30 a.m. to 3 o'clock p.m. Um, you're invited to deepen your understanding of our Orthodox traditions and practices it will enrich, this retreat will enrich your appreciation for the faith as we continue our journey to Pascha together. Registration fee is $15. There will be a Lenten breakfast and lunch included. You can contact the church office to register um, just by calling the church office. And uh, again, the, the, the retreat schedule is going to be from 8.30 to 3. There will be a light continental breakfast and welcome. Uh, the first morning session is entitled, The Church, A Forest and a Single Tree. One body, one Eucharist, one faith. Why do we worship the way we do? Uh, then there will be a Q&A after that. Then the second session is entitled, Nothing New Under the Sun, Ancient Heresies and Why They Still Matter, The Rule of Faith, Which Wasn't Actually a Rule, exclamation um, point. And then there will be a Lenten lunch. And then the third and final set, or the third session will be, Humbly Christian and Boldly Orthodox, Christianity East and West, Embracing the Orthodox Difference. There will be a short break. And then the final session with Q&A will be entitled, Seeing the Gospel, the God who wants to be seen, St. John of Damascus, icons of Holy Week and Pascha. So, some very interesting topics, and I think it should be a very fruitful experience. Um, <clears throat> additionally, we'd like to invite uh, Larry Guest, Dr. Larry Guest, to come up and to share a brief word about the faith and life, the life and faith transition he's a part of. It's good. Uh, those of you who haven't seen him with a cane before, uh, or not in recent times, ask me about it afterwards and I'll tell you then. I'm up here to talk about the, the uh, ministry that very few of you are aware of, and those of you who are aware of it may have a misperception of it. And this one is one of three uh, ministries that deals with a common topic. And other than church services, we're the one of three that deal with learning more about orthodoxy, learning how to practice orthodoxy, and how to grow stronger in our faith and in our spirituality. The other two are, all three by the way, are open to all adults that there are other groups that do deal with these topics but they're not uh, available to all, to all adults so every one of the adults here you could be part of this but other than that we're unique among the other three other two the other one is the Bible study that we've had since the beginning of the church and that that is done by the priests. Currently, Father John has been doing much of that, and, and mo 
most of it is up in, in recent times. The other one is the uh, Spiritual Book Club, which meets monthly and meets year round. So all three of these now we've talked about are on a regular basis, mostly year round. Ours is different in one regard. We meet via Zoom, a internet process that we can be in our homes and be part of the group. And we meet about every two weeks, depending on the church calendar, because we don't meet at times that are in conflict with, with the busy times. For example, the most, most difficult one, of course, is the Holy Week. Our group is seven years old. And most of you don't know uh, us uh, as we are now because as our title indicates, we as a group have transitioned. And what we originally started off is a group that dealt with grief. Along with grief, other serious transitions in people's lives like divorce or sudden loss of job and other critical periods in life that brings about a crisis. But one thing that, had, that united us and what we learned as we went through that process, that all the difficulties in life are handled through faith, through the strength of our faith and with the help of other people who are similar to us, who are interested in helping, then together, through this, we can grow and we can help each other, each other and share with our experiences if we've had experiences that, that would be helpful. This is what we do once every two weeks. And so we help all of us as we make our transition with the focus on our understanding and practice of orthodoxy and our spiritual development, particularly in growing closer, closer to Christ. And Father's sermon ties directly into this in an effort to move closer and closer to what we call pure prayer. And it's a book we're reading now. And so we use materials. We use materials to stimulate our questions and our thinking and our discussion. But discussion is primarily questions, answers, and comments, and sharing our experiences to help each other. We continue to deal with individual crises, they dealt with mine yesterday for some period of time. That's another part of why I'm here for, with the cane today. But we continue to help each other as we go through these things. But everything we do in our group is kept within the group. It's all, all confidentiality is kept there and never goes outside the group. I want to share with you who are uh, leader is, that's BG, BJ Spanos. She leads and facilitates our group. She is a trained uh, chaplain in uh, the area of grief, works with hospice people, with people in the hospice and her family. Also, she is an experienced counselor and she is a fascinating group facilitator. In my 40 years of business dealing in with groups, in my 50 years working in church work, I have probably never experienced a better group facilitator than her. Finally, I want to share with you a testimony. Nikki and I both have a belief. Our belief is this. We believe that in our 60 years of learning more about the faith, learning more about practicing the faith. We've learned more in this past seven years. This uh, group that we're in, our Life and Faith Transitions Group, is not the sole factor. It is a major factor in that, but not the sole factor. But we have grown more in the past seven years, and that's a blessing. So in closing, if anyone wants to learn more about it, get more information, or learn how to become in contact with us, please see me in the narthus afterwards. Thank you. Thank you, Larry. Thank you, Larry.
Okay, just uh, one final announcement. Uh, Julia Hill, who's one of our young adults, was not able to be here today, but uh, she is coordinating uh, really what has become a parish-wide service opportunity. So you should have gotten an email if you're on our uh, parish email list uh, this past week and one the, the week prior um, that is um, offering the opportunity to sign up uh, to be part of a, a small team of parishioners, multi-generational team of parishioners uh, that will go visit one of our homebound or elderly or, or infirm um, parishioners uh, to do um, either some service work for them, you know, clean their yard, bring them a meal or something like that, but really mostly just to be present with them. It also gives folks an opportunity who, who may be homebound or have a homebound um, family member to be able to sign up as well. So if uh, you didn't see this or you didn't sign up, please please do so. I think it's going to be a wonderful opportunity. She said there have been a number of folks who have signed up, but we could always, uh, we could always have more, and we're going to try to do at least one or two um, uh, visits to each of our 20-plus uh, homebound uh, parishioners at this time. So last but not least, we want to uh, welcome all of our guests uh, who are with us this day. Um, um, you may or may not have filled out the, the guest book, but if you uh, either way, please join us next door uh, for our um, coffee hour in the Parish Life Center. We do have a few folks who did fill out the guest book, uh, and we're just going to acknowledge them by name and give you a little welcome card. Um, so first and foremost, uh, uh, Steve Lynch uh, from Marietta, Georgia. Is Steve with us still today? Steve Lynch? Nope. Not, not, not currently with us. Okay. All right. Um, and, oh, it, maybe it wasn't Lynch, is it? Is that Lynch or Laraj? La Laraj? Steve? Oh, okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, so Steve and Mary. And is, okay, and then also Najib. Excellent, okay, wonderful. Welcome. So, two of you, three of you, four of you? Yeah, we are new. Too. My name is Jacob Arthur, and that's Lavel Javri. Oh, nice to meet you. Where are we you from? Are from? We are from Bethlehem, actually. Bethlehem? Yes. Wow. Wonderful. And you are also Mary? Yes. Mary? Bravo, bravo. I've been to Bethlehem many times. That's my, my, my and nephew, Samir. And also. Samir. Welcome. So are you new to the U.S.? Or no. We are new to the area? I used to be in California for Okay. Year. So did you I move here now? Oh, you moved uh, here. Now uh, we are very close. I live. Oh, no, bravo, bravo. So I hope we'll be having you here Bobby. frequently. Thank you. Thank bravo. You, uh, my, uh, uh, Father Mike, he, he visited me in my house one day. Oh, okay. Yeah, he oh, bravo, our house. bravo, bravo, okay. Yeah. So nice to have you with us. Thank you. Yeah. 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 And finally, we also have Steve, Gina, and I think it's Alex, Tori, are they with us still? Steve, Gina. Steve, Gina, Alex, Tori from Marietta. Hope I got that right, that name right. I think it was Alex, yeah. Okay, they may have left. All right, no problem. And right. That, I think that's it for our... our uh, well, we uh, invite you to join us next door for coffee hour and social time. May God bless you and give you always. <coughs> Please come up to receive Andidro. Take this inside.